focus on. There you go. That's a decent one, guys. That's a decent bass. That is a decent bass right there. What's up, guys? It's your boy Dan right back at you again with another episode of 302 Fishing. Welcome back to the channel here. I'm sure you can notice we have a bait shop that's in my background. It's important why we're here at this store right now. We're going to be fishing a couple days ahead of time, but we're going to buy something right now to go ahead and start that episode once we get out in that body of water over the weekend. But a lot of people were worrying about whether this store was going to reopen or not. This used to be the Williamsville Bait and Tackle Shop. It's still out here in Houston. It's still on Williamsville Road, and uh, it's now renamed Oaks outdoors right now the owner decided to go ahead and retire and enjoy his golden years so james and amanda decided to take over the mantle and reopen the store back up again we still got all of the great products that are in there and they're going to go ahead and put some new stuff up in here to kind of freshen up uh, the inventory that's in here so they're very very nice i've already had a, multiple conversations with them i even bought bait from them today to go ahead and start the episode we're going to be starting in a couple days here so give them a shout out guys. I've got all their information that's down below, their phone number, their Facebook, their hours, and everything else like that. I'm a huge proponent guys for all these local bait shops. Please visit them, help out the local economy. You know Steve's my number one, but when I'm mid-state, I'm right here at the old Williamsville Bait and Tackle, now Oaks Outdoors. I'm still going to be a great customer to these folks because they got a great, great selection of baits out here, guys. I highly encourage you because most of these small mom and pop shops carry those out of the ordinary baits that you normally wouldn't see at Dick's and Academy and all those big box stores. So that's why it's important to go here. And of course, they'll give you the skinny of all the fish that are hitting at any time of the year, whether it be freshwater, brackets, saltwater, any of those numbers of fish and waters you can fish on. So talk to these folks and they'll help you out with that, guys. So James and Amanda, I want to wish you many years of success. I know you guys are going to do great because everybody loves visiting. I have 18,000 cars coming back and forth here as I'm standing here. So jump out here, guys. They're back up and running. Traditionally, I would not start on this end of the pond. You guys see me here many times. I would always start right where I got out of the car, work my way down the shoreline, and come down to the deep area. However, I'm sure you can notice the waves are blowing from my left to my right. Got a nice gust of wind coming out of the fields right here. So we're going to work with the wind. We're going to go this way down the shoreline towards my car fishing the bait that I got out of uh, Oaks Outdoors there. So stick with me and I will describe that in a couple seconds and then we'll start casting around and get some fish on the end of the line here hopefully. Let's go ahead and show off what we're going to use today here. Uh, the bait that we got a couple days ago out of Oaks Outdoors out of Houston, Delaware. This bait has been around since maybe the mid-70s. It's been around since I've been a wee little lad and it's been through multi-generations. A lot of kids learned how to fish with this particular kind of bait that we're going to pop up in front of you. Mr. Twister kind of started off the game back in the day. However, several companies have come by and obviously copied that bait. And the one we're going to be using today, again, they've been around for quite a long time. They got a reputable lures and uh, soft plastics. That will be the Berkley Power Bait. That's what we're getting ready to use right now. This is a power grub. It's three inches in length. And again, this is pretty much a catch-all bait. You can use this all year long. And as I mentioned to you, a lot of kids have learned how to fish with this particular plastic. It can be used in several different applications. The two most popular ones, one of which being a spinner application and the one that we're going to be using is going to be a jig style presentation. The jig head that we're going to pair up with this plastic is going to be a Missile Baits Ned Ball head. It's 1 16th of an ounce. The wind is not too bad. We should be able to have a good castability with it and it should be able to get down on the bottom where I want to go ahead and drag this bait across here and hopefully get that strike on uh, with these fish. So we'll attach that on the end of the line. And then last but not least we've got our curly tail grub that's right up in front of you right here. As I mentioned to you it's three inches in length. It's impregnated with the Berkeley scent so that these fish hang on just a little bit longer. It's got a bulky body that's right here before the tail uh, so that the hook can be uh, pretty much well established on there so it doesn't fall off very easily. And uh, again, that tail has got a great look and action to it as you're bringing it across the bottom. And again, kind of triggering these fish to go ahead and snatch up this little snack uh, during these cold winter days. As I'm getting myself situated here, one good thing I like about this jig head right here, if you can notice right here on the base of the jig head, there's that little lock right here so that that base stays securely on there because you got a lot of bluegills that like to tag up on these curly tail grubs and you don't want to keep yanking the bait off and everything else. So that should stay well in place uh, if we do get any of these little critters banging up on this uh, power grub here. Let's get it. All right, before we put our first cast out there, I'm going to drop this curly tail jig right into the water right in front of you, and you're going to just watch the action on it as I'm jigging it across the bottom. You can see that tail is moving pretty well. 
with that twisting action and that is what triggers those fish to bite up on the end of the line any time of the season guys. Keep moving along. Fish on, fish on. There you go. A little one. <laughs> All right, we're not skunked. A new one was going to pop up on it at some point in time. Man, that fish is frigid. Here's our lunker of the day so far. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, give this little guy a nice little send off because you never know, that might be the only one of the day. But at least we know they'll hit it. She's gone. I didn't even feel that one. I just saw the line moving. But that was a uh, jigging across the bottom continuously. That's how I got that fish. And I don't know what's underneath the water, but somehow I got hooked up on it. All right, we got to retie again. I've never got caught out in the middle like that, so that must be something uh, pretty big out there. Possibly a rock, because that's what it felt like. Fish on. There you go, that's a decent one, guys. That's a decent bass. That is a decent bass right there. All right, all right. <laughs> there we go there we go there we go i don't have a scale i think i lost it but if I, oh no he just came off guys oh he just lost him <laughs> he was about a pound and a half guys <laughs> dang it dang it dang it dang it it must have had a nick in the line yeah i think i just overpowered him a little bit and i don't think that the drag was set properly that's why we got that little snap off there the grub is definitely getting a reaction here Technically, in my mind, I think we had two fish. It was only a couple inches short of the shoreline, but in your mind, if you don't want to count it as that, one and a half. <laughs> but I'm glad we're getting some bites here, so that's a good thing. It scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I know everybody was walking down the path. <laughs> how are you doing today? Good, how about yourself? That guy scared the daylights out of me, man. I didn't even hear him coming. We're just about done the shoreline here. We're gonna head over to another body of water and try to get that bite back up again. I have no doubt we're gonna get some more fish on the end of the line here. Even though they are fewer and far between, we are getting strikes. Off our first pond and on to the second pond right here. We're going to head towards a deep section of this uh, small community pond right here. We're going to fish uh, around the dock first and then get on the dock and cast out in that deep area. See if we can get that bite on and see if there's possibly some uh, fish closer to the shore. One thing I'm super excited about today is I think the 12th of February exactly one month from today it will be daylight savings time and we're gonna have way more light to fish on we're already seeing uh, the increase in light already normally in the winter it's like five o'clock when it's completely pitch dark out here however we got an extra half an hour light right now 534 that's sunset of course I didn't have my camera on <laughs> I didn't get the strike but we got a fish I got it on the drop, but that took a long time to get to that fish right there, at least over an hour. But as soon as I flipped over two casts in on that black curly tail grub, we got our another lunker here as I'm getting ready to lose my balance. But let's get that fish out there and uh, I'll try to get one more and then we'll head off onto that uh, last uh, pond there. 
I think what we're going to do is we're going to take our only dink we caught on this pond and move on to our final pond of the day here. I think we're going to do pretty good with the grub on this pond. One good thing is we've got all the reeds chopped off right here, so I don't have to worry about getting hooked up with this uh, little jig here. But when I drove up here, I saw a little bit of action over here on my right-hand side. So I'm going to throw a couple shots here, but our main focus right along the shoreline, right up to that point. And then we're going to go over to the other side of the pond over there where those pipes are at. Fish on. There you go. <laughs> All right, there we go. We got fish on all three ponds, and uh, he swallowed that one pretty good. So we're gonna have to go ahead and get the pliers right down there, deep in there. Doesn't look like it's in this gullet, so we should be good. There we go. Got our little buddy loose. Now let's go ahead and get her on our way. She's gone. Even with the ever so popular curly tail grub, I just could not get that great bass bite going on, guys. I mean, it is what it is. It's winter fishing, as I mentioned to you every time in Delaware. We're gonna do our darnest to try to get those green beauties on the end of the line. But that small little episode took me six hours to put together in one day. That's how uh, much effort I put into these things, guys. So hopefully, I hope you appreciate that even though they were tiny fish. But this week, 50s and 60s, and hopefully by the weekend, those waters should be warm enough. I'm gonna pop out potentially a lipless crankbait and get that going right now. I think we might be able to get that bite going on right there and trying to get some big bombers up in front of you. But I hope you guys enjoyed that episode there with the curly tail grubs. They are very, very good baits, guys. They will put fish on the end of the line, no doubt. As I mentioned to you throughout the year, if you liked it, give me that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, share the video out. Of course, drop a comment below. And please, by all means, guys, go out there and visit Oaks Outdoors. They'll appreciate your patronage. Hopefully, you guys are having a great weekend, and hopefully we get to see you the following weekend.